So I'm Dr. Liang Su Tian. So I'm the principal veterinarian at West Coast Vet Care. Um, so I practice uh, Western veterinary medicine. I was trained in University of Sydney, um, but sort of one quarter way through my career, I decided to uh, look into the um, realm of traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. Uh, so this interest came when I found that there were certain conditions um, that may require surgery, but there are groups of people that feel that surgery is too risky, too costly for their patients, uh, their pets. So we were looking for alternatives to help um, their pets. And what were they coming in for? Largely for being paralyzed, um, having severe arthritic conditions. Um, some patients came to see me for uh, vomiting and diarrhea. Um, so acupuncture involves putting in dry needles into acupuncture points, stimulating uh, acupoints along the meridian in the body. Um, and it can be used for multiple conditions like paralysis, arthritis, and certain internal medicine cases as well. Um, we also, in addition to dry needling, we might use electric acupuncture to help stimulate the nerves. Um, we might use laser acupuncture for animals that are very uh, needle shy or very fidgety. Um, and we would also use heat therapy. Um, so acupuncture in, in conjunction with some Chinese medicine is also very good in boosting immunity um, as well as um, helping manage the symptoms of cancer. Uh, so we would use a combination of um, immune modulating, immune stimulatory points together with herbs that can also help to boost the immunity for these patients. Um, so for FIV and FELV cats, if um, they are facing some disease conditions secondary to a comp compromised immune system, acupuncture can most certainly help to boost um, their immunity as well. There are certain um, points uh, in the body that um, can be used that are stimulatory for the immune system. Um, and FIV and FELV cats are also prone to rhinitis, the flu, blocked nose, difficulty breathing. Um, there are a lot of wonderful acupuncture points that can help to open up the airways um, in addition to combining it with Chinese herbs and also Western medicine. So my very first um, acupuncture case that while I was still in training was a very interesting one. It was a dog that had swallowed a corn cob and was actually uh, scheduled for um, surgery in the next one hour or so and um, the owners were were quite keen on actually um, trying acupuncture. They were, they had some cost constraints, and in my head, I didn't think acupuncture was going to be going to be the solution for this um, this patient. But nonetheless, I put in some needles um, into uh, points relating to vomiting, and um, lo and behold, 15 minutes later, the dog vomited out this corn cob and was saved from having surgery. So. Um, that was just totally, you know, a, a, a mind blowing for me. I knew, I know it works, but um, I didn't think it would work to that extent. Um, largely, patients come to see me for um, paralysis issues, so I have many cases that um, come to the clinic for um, sudden onset of paralysis or gradual onset of paralysis, um, and this could be due to some spinal injury, some spinal degeneration. Um, in certain breeds of dogs, they may have um, what's colloquially known as the slip disc, which would then involve um, having surgery to remove the degenerative disc. Um, and some owners feel that that surgery is too invasive, they are worried about the risk of general anesthesia and they find it too costly, so they come to see me for a second opinion. Um, I am very upfront and frank and I tell them that acupuncture is not a 100% cure because at the end of the day the spine is still injured, there is still some degenerative disc material there that we've not physically removed. Um, however, if they want to try acupuncture, I can most certainly help them um, and we will do our best. So typically we would have uh, four sessions, depending on how um, recent the problem is, I would do four sessions, maybe two sessions in a week. Um, and I would, after four sessions, I would then assess to see if the patient has responded positively or has had no response or uh, did not, did, had some adverse reactions. Um, that last category is not as common. Most times we see them either improving in leaps and bounds or um, there is no response. 
and after those four sessions, I would then discharge them um, if there's no response. Um, or if they improved, we then start to make the sessions a little bit more infrequent, um, sometimes once every two weeks and then finally once a month and then maybe once every three to six months um, they might come to see me for a review. Acupuncture is not the only um, option for, for patients. Um, what we want to do is actually to combine um, and synergize the benefits of both um, Chinese medicine as well as Western medicine. So um, as a practitioner of both fields, um, I feel it's very important not to neglect either. Um, so I do have patients um, and clients who come in um, seeking one or the other. So oftentimes I see a lot of people um, that are here for a second opinion um, after they have consulted their regular vet and they're here for a TCM consult hoping that um, the TCM method would be the cure. Um, and nine out of 10 cases, I explained to them that we need to synergize. We need not to neglect the Western medicine side of things, um, but we can most certainly introduce some tr traditional Chinese medicine um, to boost the um, animal's immunity, um, to enhance the overall treatment plan. So both of them should be done together.